Yes. Yes. <laughs> Hello everyone, uh, my name is Hiroshi Porta. I'm very happy to be here. Thank you for inviting me to this seminar. Yes, as uh, Luis mentioned, um, a little bit is their comment is inflated. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have uh, my career, I started as a university, private university staff member, uh, international office. And after that, I went to the US and then mastered the PhD in State University in Buffalo. Uh, where well, I was a student, I also worked for an international office, and I also I taught uh, intercultural communication with Japanese culture, business culture, in the local Buffalo area. And then I, after that, I returned to Japan, and then since then I worked for Kitotsu Fashion University. It's a bit difficult to pronounce, uh, but uh, it's outside Tokyo. So my career is, as a practitioner or researcher, I talk about um, uh, all the way is about international education. Uh, including study abroad, international students, and internationalization of Japanese education institutions. So, I'm starting this way. No immigration policy so far in Japan. In Japan, the population will decline, as you know, about 10 million over the next 10 to 15 years. And 30% of the population will be 60 years of age or older. So the lack of Asian society, and then we are losing the key and then declining the population. In 2018, the, the most of, uh, recent statistics say the number of foreign workers reached almost 1.1 million, just below 1.1 million. It's becoming easier for non-Japanese to obtain a permanent residency. I wrote many recommendations read that those non-Japanese people want to have a permanent residency. Much easier than before. However, as I said, government says no immigration, no immigrants. Okay? There's no immigration policy. One point five million people working there, no, oh, there's nothing. Okay? <laughs> so, because there's no concrete definition of immigrant. UN says someone living outside a home country more than one year should be considered as an immigrant. But this is just a kind of guideline, it's not. It's the same thing. Who, what is the definition of international student? No. Some people may say, even just four or five days visit somewhere, or international student. Someone may say, you need a visa to be international student. Today, they are international student. But there's no concrete definition. The large number of low-skilled foreign workers under the training visa and the student visa and many language schools abuse the work permit for international students. So people coming to Japan and they get the visa are supposed to work, study Japanese language. In reality, they work. What kind of job they are taking? It's called 3D jobs. What is 3D jobs? <laughs> 3D, starting D. Japanese says 3K. Mm -hmm. K. D, demanding, <laughs> dangerous, dirty. <laughs> okay? So those jobs, young Japanese people or Japanese people in general, they don't want to take the job now. If we take the kind of job, those international students were training visa. Yeah. Training visa, it's, a, it's supposed to be the people coming from to Japan outside the country, and then they get the internship, they work on the job training, and then they're supposed to go back to home country. In reality, it's just like guest workers in the German uh, In 2018, nearly 300 international students, including Japanese people, international students, enrolled at Japanese language school, 300,000. So current Japanese target 300,000 international students. Accomplished. Fantastic. Great. If you, as long as you see the number, it's okay. But in reality, What's happening inside Japan is not really the situation, it's not so good. Officially, Japan has no immigration policy. However, however, front door closed, back door, side doors, open. <laughs> <laughs> so, Japanese also culture, their double standard is Japanese, honne, hatemai. Two truths, not one truth. So, that's also the using the uh, policy. 
see, as you can see, um, very small percentage. <coughs> Even the number is going up, but still uh, immigration. Foreign nationals from smaller part of the population. And compared with UK, US, other countries, even lower than South Korea. South Korea is now working very hard uh, to get the same problem that um, population is growing, but they are working hard to attract the foreign workers. And then, as I said, Japan opened up the foreign workers. Yes, as I said, nearly 1.5 million people, and then they are working for uh, manufacturing sectors, other services, service sectors. Uh, the people who have been to Japan, you can tell that you go to convenience stores in Japan. Those people working for cashier, working there, many non-Japanese. Mm -hmm. And then also you go to a restaurant and Japanese bars called Izakaya. Mm -hmm. and many, many non-Japanese working there. <coughs> many of them are students or are students, they are working. So, as you can see, foreign workers in Japan uh, visa status, uh, but this graph don't have to worry about so much of visa status. More just you, you can see that the number is growing very rapidly. And then this is interesting. So near this uh, uh, 2017 statistics, this total 1.28, but now it's 1.5. But uh, I think this ratio doesn't change so much. 20% of foreign workers in Japan. They work under student visa. Student visa. Training, as I said, 20%. Why the international students can work off campus? In Japan, international students are allowed to work off campus up to 28 hours a week. If you get the work permit, 28 hours. But so difficult to check all the people really observe this law 28 hours. Right? The number is growing, it's very difficult to track the working hours. So in reality, people work longer. Some prefectures they want to expand the working hours more, including my own country work. They want they, they apply to the government, give me a special deregulation zone. <laughs> International student can work, 30, work for 36 hours a week their application. Mm -hmm. So means now I'm kind of confused. People can work while study, or people can study while working. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. So, so but is it that desperately Japan need people? Because those Working age people is drastically declined in the future. Age pyramid. This is 1980. I was a high school student. Yes, we had a pyramid. Pyramid. Mm. That's why it's called a pyramid. Now, what is the shape? What is the shape? <laughs> <laughs> Japanese higher education. So it's not like UK. 80% of higher education institutions are private. 77% of universities are private. We have about uh, 780 universities all over Japan. And then and we say an age when all are accepted to college. If you are not really picky, you really want to come to Shitosubashi, you want to go to Toshisha University, you have to work hard. But if you are not so worry about it, it's always seat for you. So, deteriorating national. 
national demography decline and the over capacity of higher education. The number of universities, 523 in 1992, now 782, large private sector. So college participation rate, higher education, higher education participation rate, nearly 60%. And then if you include uh, junior uh, college, um, other type of the, uh, higher education, acceptance rate, 87.9% means the number of seats in the denominator um, and then uh, the number of the applicants divided by number of the seats, 87 percent So post-secondary education participation rate, including vocational school, non-university higher education uh, sectors, higher education institutions, 81.5%. So private universities do not meet their authorized enrollment quotas, nearly 40%, nearly 40%. Two years college is facing 70%. So uh, now private universities' competition is becoming intense to, to attract uh, Japanese students. Uh, student. So low domestic enrollment, the private universities, as I guess, undergraduate, because private universities usually large undergraduate program, small postgraduate program. Then, if the private university located in a provincial area, single department, small college, they are in trouble. They can't attract enough student, number of students. National University, including Kitotsubashi, we have another problem. We expanded postgraduate program. Now, student number. The our university, is, in general, um, national university, nearly 25%, one out of four students in the national postgraduate program. Maybe now becoming one out of three. That, that is also serious a problem. Private universities, oh, undergraduate. National university, postgraduate. Plus, now Japanese children, kids, don't want to apply for STEM subject, STEM field. This is kind of similar, US or UK, many industrialized countries, the number of people who want to work for hard science, STEM field is going down. Everybody wants to study management, want to be a manager. <laughs> <laughs> right? Same thing in Japan. So we are also trying to recruit students in China because they are good at math. Right? And then another thing is also prevailing skill to migration approach and the revenue generating approach as a national of Japan's international mm -hmm. student policy and the practice. Right? So this is a skill to migration, basically study in Japan, don't go home, stay here. I want to help you to find a job, stay. Gen revenue generating approach, it's not like a US, UK, Australia model. Japan cannot make money, cannot make so much profit, you cannot charge higher tuition. Mm -hmm. Now, more of those private universities, national universities, they have a program, enrollment program, they have to fill the empty classroom. Mm -hmm. So that's also, I would say, business approach. So, we knew it. There was a peak, 2 million high school graduate, 40% decline, decrease. We knew it. And then participation rate is going up, acceptance rate is going up. But still, the university number went up. So it can't help. Sometimes I say, Japanese people don't have a basic skill of math. Because we knew it, population is going down. But the, we, <laughs> the number of universities is just growing up. More now. Why? Why? The government, even government deregulate uh, establishment standard of university in Japan and they increase the number. Why? Because kind of Japan expected, oh, that we are moving, shifting from manufacturing based industry to knowledge based economy. We need the people to study again and then change jobs. We don't get the workplace. We expect it. Doesn't happen. Still, very small percentage, non traditional student, Japanese university. 
lowest data bank will receive it. When I was in the US, US so many non-traditional and uh, old students in the university. But now, people don't come back because the system is different. Uh, Anglo um, working employment system, more in-house training is coming based on lifetime employment system. So the number is international student number going up. And then what is the change? So going back to skilled and revenue generating approach here. But the before 1983 is a, I would say the first international student policy in Asia, Japan stand. It's called 100,000 international student plan. And that is a aid approach. Aid approach. It's part of war compensation. Japan, even after, the, after World War II, um, often say from ashes to prosperity, uh, economy grew very quickly, developed so quickly, and then become second largest economy in the world. But at that time, I still also remember, uh, Japan was criticized as an economic animal. The military soldier became a corporate soldier, mm -hmm. and the money, money, money business, but no much contribution to education, development, and, and, and academic. So the Japan started this one. Basically, the idea came at that time, at the beginning, 10% um, of international students should be fully supported by Japanese government. Scholarship, initial education scholarship, other scholarships, come to Japan, we provide education, study, and then go home, go back to your country, work for the development of your country, and then we expect you to be a bridge between Japan and your home country. Basically, soft of power approach. Then 300,000 international students student grant study 2008. It's a different, different number of those full ride scholarship, government scholarship percentage. Number is the same. But the number is going up, that means percentage is going down. So very small percentage of government scholarship. More, more privately financed students become standard. Come from which country? Yeah. China. Because Chinese students at that time, without scholarship, couldn't study China with financial support. Now, Chinese students rich and mm -hmm. work. So they are more privately financed students. And then, as I said, um, stay in Japan, don't go home. That's the approach, still migration, and every engineering approach. And then Japan in privatization strategy 2014 is the current Abe government started. Attract the highly skilled international students to boost their country's competitiveness and to revitalize their country. So this part of part of um, uh, war, war compensation was a development aid approach, also uh, diplomacy becoming more economic driven policy. Economy, vitalized economy is a first priority. And then also, the new trend local government and the local business community they promote the recruitment and employment of international students in collaboration with higher education institutions. I'm an advisor of Hiroshima Prefecture government last six years. They really want to increase the number of international students because population decline is so severe in rural. Provision there compared to Tokyo. Tokyo, if you are living in Tokyo, you don't feel the population is declining. Packed train, commuter train. But you go to Hiroshima, I realize I visited many towns and villages, villages, all the people, not many kids. And then it's dying, disappearing the village one by one every year. So now it's more local government working very hard including my own town, Fukuoka. So, the statistics also again. International students, including this language study students. Depending on the country, those language study students, some countries include, some countries not include. UK statistics not include. America not include. Japan include. Because government wants to see that those new numerical targets are achieved so quickly, so they increase, uh, uh, to improve the number. 
Chinese students number 38.4%. Used to be 60, nearly 70. Now it's declining. Higher education institutions and language schools, they're separate. This is a higher education in university and colleges, they are said language. You can tell now it's a Vietnamese student, number one, largest share. And the Chinese student, 40%. Compared with this one, the total is Chinese student high, I'll tell you later. And then language school. Now, so many language schools. In, as I said, number of universities is 780. Now, language school is number almost the same, 760 language schools all over Japan. And the Vietnamese numbers, not students' numbers, growing. But this is an interesting thing. This is an interesting thing. Language school, vocational school, students, 30%. Universities, colleges, postgraduate program, around 70%. This is as consistent in the past. In the last five, six years changed drastically. Mm -hmm. Here, it's, now it's more than half, more than half. You can tell the percentage changed more than three times, more than twice. So this is trend, the same kind of statistics. You can tell this decreasing. Now, even the overall number reaching 300,000, but the percentage of students enrolled in university more and here it's different. Language school application. So what is happening? Advancement rate from language school to university. Japanese case, still medium of instruction, majority in Japanese. So the student first learn Japanese, academic level Japanese. So many students, 70% of international students, do not come to Japanese university higher education directly. They come to Japanese university via language school. They study one to two years Japanese language school in Japan. Chinese students' case, 60%. After they study language school, they go to university, undergraduate or postgraduate. Vietnamese, Nepalese, very small percentage. Why? Why? Due to the lack of Japanese proficiency and the financial ability. It's difficult for those Japanese, Vietnamese and Nepalese students to be accepted by universities compared with Chinese Taiwanese. First of all, those three countries, three countries, Japan's main customers, mm -hmm. higher education. Mm -hmm. Same Chinese language, Chinese characters background, they quickly pick up the language. One to two years ago. Language student visa, maximum, maximum two years. Two years. Enough. Those people do not have Chinese character background. It's so hard to be academic job level of Japanese. Plus financial difficulties. So Taiwanese students, Korean students, also it's stable, did not decrease much. More those Vietnamese, Nepalese. Uh, Sri Lanka uh, increasing. So now I'm going to talk about employment of international students upon graduation because it's a skilled migration approach. Japan wants to hire them as a, uh, as a corporate workers, company, company workers, increasing the need for globally minded workers, international students that target the Two international students study in Japan, also Japanese students will study abroad experience. And they're more focusing on this side because very often international students speak three speak three languages. Japanese, their home country, uh, mother tongue, Chinese or Vietnamese, and plus English. The hiring international students from Asian countries as a bridging um, human resource, bridging personnel. For instance, bridging IT system engineer. So means uh, those uh, Asian countries. Now it's also factory moving from China to Southeast Asia. 
Vietnam is a good example. So many uh, software, Japanese company software, actually made in Vietnam. So the people who study in Japan, going back to Vietnam, the bridge between Japanese client and then go software companies in, in Vietnam. So that's why I call the bridge, bridging person, bridging human resources. Rational, revitalize Japanese economy again, very economy driven policy, globalizing the economy and emerging markets in Asia. Japan's population decline means market is very small. And then Southeast Asian countries still pyramid, the healthy demography, the big market, growing market, so the market is moving there. Support the business expansion, growth outside Japan, especially in Asia. Companies need a globally minded workforce and bridging human resources. Shift from manufacturing industry to the consumer and the service based one. Com communication skills become so important. So, Japan's economic success usually rely on manufacturing sector, cars, electric appliances, now shifting to more, more of service industry, including now is a Japan is also uh, um, um, expanding um, tourism, inbound uh, tourism. So that's also new communication skills. Mm -hmm. However, Japanese foreign language skill is very bad. <laughs> very bad, including mm -hmm. English. So we have so much reliance on those international students in Japan. Another reason, this is also statistics, reasons for hiring international students. To stimulate workplace by increasing diversity within the country. Within the country. <laughs> International students will be hired as a symbol of companies' diversity or internationalization. Internationalization, my understanding, not only really just at all, non-Japanese but something English related things, more fundamentally to change your organization, mindset, where you are working, where you study. However, very often, Japanese internationalization, Japanese understanding diversity, just add something. Yeah. Fundamentally, we don't change anything. <laughs> add, 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 surrounded our organization, the school. Sometimes we call the Tejima, small like Edo era, Japan closed the company for many years. Only Nagasaki, small island, has a open small door for the exporting, importing with China, Korea, and then yeah. So that's the kind of sense, kind of model. So sounds like nice, okay? We hire the diversity is our buzzword, internationalization, globalization, very important. Okay, just hire some non Japanese and they put in the front, front line. Sounds like we are so international, we are so global, okay? Language skills. However, in the reality, international students are expected to have very high level proficiency in Japanese. As I said, communication skills become more important. So it means Japanese company, no manufacturing sector, really rely on this part. Okay? Those people who study in Japan understand Japanese, they speak two, three more languages. So, we want to hire, mm -hmm. expand the business. Some positive things. Successfully change the visa status from student to work. It's increased a lot. Currently, Japanese statistics, uh, survey, survey results say, those people who, international students who are in Japan, Upon the graduation, 60%, 60% wants to get a job in China. In reality, in reality, 35, 34% students, international students, actually got a job. So only half. Mm -hmm. But this half, we say only half, but international comparison is quite high. Mm -hmm. One half of the international students can get a job in Japan upon graduation. Mm -hmm. That is high. And also, very interesting thing in Japan now, all over college graduate, all over undergraduate program graduate, 
can get the job very easily. Decent statistics. April, this year, 97.5% of college graduates got a job upon graduation. Because we don't have people. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so many people are retiring, and then few people are coming into the business. Yeah. It's, it's so hard to find a country. More than 97% of college graduates got a job right away. So now in Korea, China, people are applying to Japanese companies when they are home graduation, they are um, um, post uh, uh, undergraduate program. Japan and Korea, sometimes political tension going up, but now Japan and Korea, three plus one program. Undergraduate program in Korea, three plus one is one year they come to Japan. Wow. While they're studying, while studying the one year in Japan, they find a job. And they just quickly go back for the graduation and they come back to Japan. This is also the and then 34.1% of major companies hired international graduates. More than half major companies also have hired international students. They are from, okay. On the SME, small medium sized companies, also they really want to hire uh, international students. Some gaps. Uh, many students want to, as I said, want to work in Japan, but half of them have a job in Japan. And then, Big company, Japanese case, including Japanese student, the student from our neighboring country, they want to get a job. Big company, Hitachi, Toshiba, uh, Nissan. But the, many also students employed by SME. But SME in Japan is also now is it's quite promising. They also work uh, uh, to break the new market in Asia. I think it's not so bad things. And then um, Yes, many students are actually employed by SME. And then, STEM students are in high demand, but 23.2% of international is measuring the STEM field. In Japan, as I said, nearly 80% of universities are private, means large capacity humanities and social science, but not much STEM field, because STEM field costs a lot. So, STEM field focus on national universities. Advisor in Hiroshima Prefecture, we did a survey. Many Hiroshima companies in Hiroshima want to hire STEM international students, STEM field, international students measuring STEM field. Not many, not many. So that is also a problem. Difficulties international students face while looking for a job. Employers tend to require native equivalent level Japanese language ability. It's a problem in Japan is, I would say, the perfectionist approach. <laughs> must language is really must be polished, must be really good. Because only this language is only used in this country. Now, English is because many countries use it. Uh, you know, it's not really strict in the grammar of those things, but in Japan it's, it's very picky about it. Peculiar recruitment and employment system, time consuming recruiting and job hunting process. This is based on membership based employment, not the job based employment system. This is maybe I got to explain a bit. It, in a Japan's case, first apply for company, not the job. You apply for company. You get the job, you don't know what your job. There's no job description. Okay? When I work in the US, of course I I have a job description, I sign a contract. In Japan, including Tosubashi, I don't have job description. I don't have a contract. This is a standard practice in Japan. So you got to be a member of the organization first. And then company assign your job. So very often, in Tosubashi campus, some Japanese students say, Yeah, I got a job, great, I got a job. And the international student, what is your job? I don't know. How <laughs> 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 come? You don't have a job? And you got Job. Yeah, I got a job, but I don't know what I'm going to do. This is a standard practice because membership based. You have to be a member. Then you get the job. Mm -hmm. So then you go all the process. March to October, this is an official kind of guidance between guideline between business sector and the university. But before even that, they regret most many students go to the, those um, sessions, orientation. Second semester, 
in the third year. Mm -hmm. Two end of the uh, end, uh, second semester and third year, and the end of the third year, third year to the middle of the fourth year. When I was young, our job hunting started in October. So many students study in the US or UK one year, junior year abroad, and came back and start looking for a job. Doesn't work that way. Because this is almost end the job hunting season. Once a year, once a year, company hire mass of the graduates once a year. Just like a school. You are private school. Very similar system. Activity test, several rounds of interview, interview often, four or five rounds. Mm -hmm. Interview are changing from junior level, mid level, eventually CEO interview, those college students. When I got the job in the US, just my immediate boss said, Oh, sounds like, nice, come to the office, make sure. <laughs> That's it. Right? But it's a long process. Too many manners and etiquette, including recruitment. Suit. This is a guide, <laughs> Japan Student Service Organization, job hunting guide for international students. So, detail, detail, etiquette. And also, even when you bow, different Japanese bow, three types of bows, the different degree. When you sit, you can sit like this, you have to sit like this. Okay. So, those things, and say, come and do not intend to hire students who stand up with their appearance and unique type. They are checking to see if you are well groomed and dressed based on social concepts. There is no need to dress yourself up with expensive items. Right? This is common sense. It's a world of common sense. I don't know. This common sense must be different. <laughs> right? okay. So this is a result. Such a diversity, you can see. It's a possible. You really hire the employees of Japan, they are Japan, yeah, must be more grown. Yeah? <laughs> Poses for purpose, wearing an initiation ceremony at the hangar of the Haneda Airport. Yeah. Yeah. This is a Japanese diversity. Now it's wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. Difficulties in terms of face with working at a Japanese company, business culture. Long term employment, senior based way system. One of my Chinese students, he got the job the as a model, big food company. He came back from the meeting, those newly hired people, and he was so kind of shocked because all those people were hired, about 10 Tokyo University graduate, Kyoto University graduate. What when they greet each other, they said, please be nice to me. I want to be a good uh, part of the company until retirement. The very first day, they said, until retirement, we want to be a good friend. So this Chinese student, his brand work for this company for five years, and they changed the usual. And then he couldn't tell. He couldn't tell the truth. He was just also pretending to talk to I also want to work here in the United States. This goes in vague assessment system, promotion is very slow because lifetime employment system, strict work ethics, long work hours. Yes, those is after work socialization, high power distance collective and those cultural differences, percentage of foreign faculty members. Then now I'm moving to the universities, also university. Now we are increasing the number of non-Japanese faculty. Percentage of foreign faculty members at the university. 4.6%. Still, it's not dead. We don't have a migrant academic percentage, just no Japanese. Now, China, Korea, US. Those Chinese and Koreans, including Chinese descendants, Korean descendants, they usually teach in Japanese. US makes teach English, um, also language instructor. Non tenure contract based of non renewable are Japanese. Japanese word, if I write directly translate into Japanese into English, help us, skip of help us. Or utility persons, Mr. Convenient, Mrs. Convenient means dangerous. Yeah. Now is a more tenure, full fledged faculty member, shifting from baseball model, um, at, at 
L, model, A in MOD, L, model. Baseball mode to rugby or soccer. What is the difference? If I know baseball is not really popular here, the baseball case always number of foreign players limited. Two pitchers, two field players, and then we just need you to help us. Soccer, rugby, the players can choose for which country, and the players are really part of the team. So that is different. Emerging academic administrators, especially vice president, deans, chairs, directors, senior officials, particularly senior international officers. Greg is a good example, vice president of international, and it's a, but it's a condition, good command of Japanese. Otherwise, so terrible. Okay, this last part, challenge and opportunity. Gaps between concept, vision, and reality. As I said, highly skilled workers expected to come in Japan and in Asia. But the reality, Japan needs more low skilled workers. The student visa, trade visa, used to attract those low skilled workers. Highly skilled workers, non Japanese, must be still in the law. And also, policy and practice is also a gap. Policy is created, but actual practice. Even just day before yesterday, NHK, Japanese BBC, 30 minutes program about how non international students work in on the night. In front of the school, the bus comes, pick them up, go to the factory, and they work 8 p.m. to 5 p.m. and they go back to the school. I don't know how they switch. Mm. Uh, mm. The NHK forum, yeah, the, the student. This is happening. Um, executives and higher uh, human resource department, executives of the company said, yes, we need the highest skilled workers from other countries. We have to diversify our companies, workers. But the reality, HR department, they want to hire non-Japanese people. Just look like Japanese. But look like more than Japanese. Right? Because the symbol of the diversity. To diversify its workforce, the company has higher international graduates. However, in reality, they are higher international graduates like Japanese, looking for more Japanese than Japanese. So sometimes international students might sit and come to my office and say, I'm so tired because I acted today whole day, acted like another persona for me. It's not real me, but more Japanese me for interviews whole day. I'm so tired. That's it. And Japanese students, employees with study abroad experience could be a key to solve those problems. So I was pushing Japanese students to study abroad, understand, you have to understand the different culture. But our school, many schools now study abroad number is going down. Do you know what? So easy to get a job. Mm -hmm. So from study abroad office, study abroad advice are point to Economy is good, not good for us. Mm. Because the economy is going bad and it's very difficult to get a job, students work hard to act the guy. Mm. Right? But you can get a job. I, I tell the students, they say, no, I don't have to go to other countries. I just get a job. Easy. Unhealthy triangle. This is not created this world. Trouble the private higher education institution and the unethical Japanese language school. One side, another one, international students who want to work rather than study. And another one, companies facing labor shortage problem. Those three sectors, they're happy. They're happy. Nobody complains. Because those students come to Japan, just the visa factory, visa business, um, like a business um, visa factory, get a visa. Students don't want to work, uh, don't want to study hard, just want to work and get the money. And the company said, we need a worker. Those unethical clients want to work well. Nobody complains. So that's a problem. Gaps between concept of vision and reality, I said government and educational institution, the industry, policy, high skilled workers, and practice, low skilled workers. Executive, as I mentioned. Companies hire those things. Uh, to diverse its workforce, companies, this is also I mentioned it. Okay, okay so the, the problem, lack of long term grand design for, for immigration, what international students in general. 
immigration. Is it possible for Japan to shift from unauthorized backdoor open policy to front door open policy? It's not easy. Because current government supported by more conservative nationalism. So it means one side we need foreigners to revive the economy. But on the other side, we don't want to have any immigrants. So that's why, you know, between the hard press and the like this one, long term grand design formation, punch work response, an add on approach. So Japanese society, schools, doesn't want to change ourselves, doesn't like revisit and redefine the country of Japan. What is Japan in the future? What kind of society we want to have? We don't discuss so much. Just to touch what, like, okay, we need that one, we need that one, that change a little bit, a little bit. We basically postpone. Small island country and huge mindset. They will want to work more fundamental programs, just try to postpone. I don't want to see this program at the moment. <laughs> Somebody may, may solve it in the future. Thank you very much. <laughs>